Leland, the UN Security Council is scrambling now to send more peacekeeping forces to South Sudan. It's uh, the world's youngest country. It's not one we talk about all that month, but it's in the middle of Africa. And only two years after the country got its independence, the violence there has really exploded. Now tens of thousands of men, women, and children are looking for protection at UN bases amid growing ethnic violence. Lisa Daftari is joining me now to talk more about this, a Fox News contributor and a Mideast journalist. And it is an area we don't talk about all that much, much but should, and the UN is paying attention. They're going to send 5,000 more peacekeepers. How tense is the region right now? Right. Well, this situation could turn into something much greater, and the UN has the experience of Rwanda of 1994 on its hands, where 800,000 people perished, and the rest of the world seemed to be sleeping. And the U.S. has the experience of Benghazi on their hands, where we got a warning and we did not act uh, in time to save. So the first step here is to get the Americans out, is to send aid over there in order to keep peace as, as best as possible and with the hopes of, of restabilizing the two countries. Is it political? needs that they have in terms of stabilization or are there actually humanitarian needs where the people there are suffering? Both. So you have a, a recipe for disaster here where you have uh, a uh, two nations that have been at each other's throats since they got their independence and the reason that they even want and got their independence is because of the infighting. You have terrorist elements within Sudan itself and you have oil in South Sudan. So, And then you have all these tribal rivalries and these rivalries have been going on for a long time. So while there was something to trigger this newer round of uh, you know, intensified violence, the people are at risk and the governments are not going to back down. So we want want to get help there, humanitarian aid, political stabilization. Is corruption an issue? Corruption is always an issue. And if you look at all the different UN peacekeeping missions, I mean, it's a joke to a lot of people who really look at you know, the people who are sent over there. There are documentaries that show peacekeepers drinking beers on the beach instead of really going to do what they're meant to do. But at the same time, we can't sit back, and that's what the UN uh, is, is meant to do, to, to restabilize and to uh, secure the region once again. What do you predict then will be if we get the peacekeepers in and we're protecting our interests as well as our citizens that are there working, mm -hmm. what does the future look like for South Sudan? It's very, very important what goes on in the next few weeks in terms of restabilizing what goes on in South Sudan for many reasons. And the most important here uh, being global security, really, because we have again, terrorist elements in Sudan itself, and this will serve as a hedge in, if we're able to protect, and the U.S. has every interest, and we know that we have an interest. In 2012 alone, there was $275 million in foreign aid that we supplied to South Sudan. So we have every interest in seeing South Sudan stand up as a sovereign nation and, and to protect it from the terrorist elements and to protect it from those who are very much interested in getting involved in the oil industry there, including the U.S. It's a smaller region. I had asked you before we went back on the air during the break how big, and you said it's about the size of Texas. That's a lot of money then, sending over $275 million? It's a lot of money, but again, we are very keen on getting in on this oil economy. Currently, there's no U.S. interest in their oil economy because of the sanctions, but once things get restabilized, we could remove the sanctions from South Sudan remove the terrorist elements from South Sudan, not allow the Sudanese to get involved. And again, we're worried about the North. We're worried about the Muslim Brotherhood influence in Egypt. We're worried about the East and West. So there's a lot of hovering forces here looking to swoop right in and, and have their influences on, on, you know, and it's, again, three-letter word, oil. It's all about the oil money. Very ambitious, though, goals, it sounds like. Lisa Absolutely. Daftari, thank you so much for explaining sure. a topic that we don't think about enough. My thank pleasure. you.